Good morning. Thank you for receiving me here to speak today. Okay, I'll talk about the Tunisian Revolution and the role of internet during the revolution and during the democratic uh, transition. Okay, the Tunisian Revolution is the first of a series of revolutions that uh, have erupted in the Arab world and then in the whole world. It seemingly started uh, with the self-immolation by fire of Mohammed Bazizi, the street vendor uh, from Sidi Bouzid, on December 17, 2010, and ended with the ousting of uh, the ex-president of Tunisia, Ben Ali, on January 14, 2011. Apparently, less than one month was uh, sufficient to get rid of the head of 23 years old dictatorship. But reality is too much different. Tunisians endure dictatorship, oppression, social injustice, and limitations on freedoms and freedom of speech for more than 23 years. They even tried to rise against dictatorship and against the Ben Ali's regime several times, as was the case in 2008 when a social movement against unemployment and nepotism started in the mining area, including Rudayev, Matlawi, and Gafsa. And here you can see uh, pictures, photos from the 2008 social movement in the Tunisian South. Many people were arrested, imprisoned, and even tortured and some young people were killed. It had been a bloody social movement. But at the end, the regime succeeded in stopping it because this movement didn't spread to other parts of the country because um, the media didn't succeed in covering it properly. Okay, but the 2010-2011 uh, revolution is sometimes called the Jasmine Revolution. Other times, it is also known as the Facebook, Twitter, or the WikiLeaks revolution. However, the majority of Tunisians are against and are completely rejecting such terms. For us, Jasmine is linked to tourism. It is the symbol of sweetness, peace, tolerance, and docility. However, what Tunisians experienced is so far from being a peaceful and sweet revolution. Dozens, or let me say hundreds, of young people were killed by the bullets of the security forces. Okay, I'm sorry to show you these photos, but these photos from uh, the Tunisian Revolution, <laughs> called Jasmine Revolution, a name rejected by us. Through the years, thousands were savagely tortured, and some of them were even killed under torture. This is far from being sweet or peaceful. As to the Facebook, Twitter, or the WikiLeaks revolution terms, many people, me included, think that the role of internet in general has been really exaggerated. And let's examine this. Why this revolution is not a Facebook, Twitter, or WikiLeaks revolution? The event started on the streets, people angry and fed up of social injustice, poverty, and especially shocked by the image of the burning body of Mohammed Bouazizi, took to the streets to express their resentment. They were asking for social justice, dignity, and freedom. The demonstrations spread to different areas, and the social demands turned into political ones, especially when the police used force again used force again and killed many people. These different developments were covered by social media when professional journalists were absent. This is why we cannot talk about social networks on internet revolution. It is a street revolution. And let's examine this in details. Why this revolution is not a Facebook, Twitter, or WikiLeaks revolution? Let's start with WikiLeaks. The majority of Tunisians knew the cables about Tunisia released by WikiLeaks in November 2010. The release came as a confirmation to what we already knew about the ruling family in Tunisia. 
Moreover, many of the people who took to the streets when Mohammed Bouazizi set his body on fire never heard about WikiLeaks. As to Facebook, Facebook played an important role as the majority of videos, uh, as the majority of videos, pictures, and news were shared on it. And here we can uh, see a photo from a street in the capital Tunis, and we can see in French, "Merci Facebook, thank you Facebook." But we cannot qualify it as the trigger of the Tunisian revolution. Indeed, whereas in Egypt calls for the revolution start on internet, this wasn't the case in Tunisia, where everything started on the ground before being supported by the cyber activism movement. And let's see the role of Twitter. The, uh, when the event started, few Tunisians have already heard about Twitter. The number of Twitter users rose in the later days of the event this is why its role can be qualified as late and secondary. So, um, and here we can see the evolution of the use of the hashtag Sidi Bouzid. I call it the official hashtag for the Tunisian revolution. Okay, we can see that during uh, the first days of the revolutions, less than 2,000 people were using this hashtag and uh, the number of people using this hashtag grows starting from January 14th, which means started the day when Ben Ali uh, left the country. Okay. Um, so we cannot qualify um, the social networks as the trigger for the revolution. So despite the fact that social media and internet in general played an important role in overthrowing a 23 years old dictatorship in my country and other authoritarian regime in Egypt as the world was and is following Arab citizens gathering to protest against the authoritarian regimes that restricted and continue to limit the freedom of their citizens and offer them poor economic opportunities or none at all thanks to Twitter feeds, blogs, Facebook videos and photos that disseminated across the web instantly despite internet access in many, uh, despite the limited internet access in many of those Arab countries, social media alone wouldn't have facilitated the Arab revolutions. It was combined to a myriad of other factors as well as different methods of digital and traditional media. Technological advances such as cell phones, cameras, Facebook and Twitter in conjunction with more traditional media outlets like TV channels, Al Jazeera and France Van Cat created the circumstances for such effective information disseminations. Indeed, in countries like mine, internet is not available to, to everybody, so um, TV channels like Al Jazeera and France Van Cat were uh, broadcasting videos and photos taken by cyber activists, and this is how information spread about the development of events uh, in my country. But let's examine in which ways was internet helpful during the, Tun uh, the Tunisian revolution. Internet played two important roles. The first one is the dissemination of the information in the absence of traditional media, and by traditional media, I mean radio, TV, and newspapers, and another role, uh, which is the mobilization of people. When the Tunisian regime tried to impose a media blackout to hide what was going on in Sidi Bouzid, news leaked and were disseminated thanks to internet. People on the ground were using their cell phones to capture the violence of the police and to show what was really going on in Tunisia. Cyber activists were trying to collect information thanks to their network of friends. Some of them traveled across the country to obtain the exact information and to take photos and record small video sequences. And despite the different obstacle and mainly censorship, cyber activists succeeded in disseminating information. The regime feeling the danger coming from internet used censorship more and more and even had recourse to hijacking 
as was the case with the email addresses and Facebook accounts of several activists. This started mainly on January 3rd after the anonymous attack on the governmental websites known as Tunisia Operation. And no less than eight cyber activists were arrested after this operation. This operation happened on January the 2nd and uh, the day after many Facebook profiles of cyber activists were hijacked and my Facebook profile was one of these uh, profiles and you can see what happened with the profile. I, I couldn't access it anymore. So, um, traditional media, and by this I mean newspapers, radio, and television, continued to spread lies and rumors until January 14th. When the police was killing peaceful protesters, our main TV channel, TV set, was talking about gangs gangsters trying to spread terror across the country. And now let's see the second role played by internet, which is the mobilization of people. Another role played by internet was the mobilization of people, but this came as a second step. In the capital Tunis, for example, the first demonstration, and here we can see a picture of this first demonstration, was organized to support the social movement of Sidi Bouzid and was announced on Facebook through a Facebook event. This happened on December the 25th, 2010. And this was the case of the following demonstrations. To summarize, we can say that the Tunisian revolution started on the ground. It didn't start uh, on internet as was the case in Egypt, for example. It started on the streets. Nevertheless, internet played an important role, but it was just a tool. It was neither the trigger element nor the unique element of this revolution. Social networks were important, but some were more efficient than others. Indeed, the role of Facebook was more important than that of Twitter. And of course, I'm talking about Tunisia. But how is the situation right now? Now we are uh, preparing for our elections for uh, a constituent assembly, which we write the new constitution for our country. And uh, internet is continuing to play an important role. But internet turned into a double-edged uh, weapon. Social networks who made the greatness of the Tunisian revolution uh, will, social, sorry, will social networks who made the greatness of the T Tunisian revolution make its decline? Indeed, social networks which played the role of media and news agency were also the space of free speech where paid uh, administrators succeeded in winning the trust of the majority of Tunisians. After January 14th, the, the space administrators as well as blogger experienced fame. Moreover, more and more people understood the power, power sorry, and efficiency of social networks, and especially Facebook. These page administrators who worked in silence took part in the revolution under nicknames and maybe will be taking part in the democratic transition using a false profile, changed their operating manner. Many of them joined the real opposition while others are recycled into bureaucracy. They became conscious managers. They can make the glory of a political party as they can be the cause of its failure. Many of them pretend to be neutral and objective, but this is not totally true. Some are working for specific political parties and others choose to sell their pages, counting thousands of fans to political parties. It has become a marketing matter. To get money, these administrators are ready to attack other political parties, any public figure, or any cause. They are ready to spread rumors and to create chaos on internet. This is why we have to be really vigilant and take care when dealing with news found on social networks, especially that in countries like mine, even if we think that things have changed, this is not true. Media is still controlled and manipulated by the same people who used to work for the old regime. And people are still trusting social networks as news source. 
social net networks who helped in the ousting of a dictator should be used usefully to fulfill democracy and to drive our democratic transition to success. But will this be possible? Thank you for your attention.